So we're ready for the digital labs and libraries. We've got Sarah Felker coming back up. We've got Cindy Ho and we've got Kat Lucas. While they, emer while they approach, I will tell you about them. Sarah, we already know, is a Dungeons and Dragons player. Um, Cindy Ho is the head of digital services at Richmond Public Library. She said she unexpectedly ended up working in this area after starting out as at RPL as a children's library and running teen coding workshops. Since then, she's met so many amazing, sorry, and generous people that have inspired her to share all she's learned and create more digitally. She enjoys playing video games in her spare time. And Kat Lucas is a digital services librarian at North Vancouver City Library. While she loves ebooks, her Kobo, and all the techie aspects of her job, nothing in her background would have indicated a career in digital services. Particularly that incident involving a sledgehammer and a particularly uncooperative computer that most definitely had it coming. <laughs> Please stick to time. Yes. So I know I have five minutes to kind of go over for five years of development of the Richard Public's launch pad. Um, at the Richard Public Library, I've only really been there for about four years. So some of this goes like before me. Um, so I'm going to talk about sort of like what happened before, sort of what I've been doing, and where I kind of want to go with digital services as we move forward. So it is in all ages um, digital literacy space. And um, it's my first time here at the eBook Summit. I was actually pleasantly surprised. It's my first time because I don't really deal with collections work. So even though digital services, we don't actually deal with um, eBooks and all of those e-library resources that I've been learning so much about. So um, the project started as a pilot. Back in 2013, there was a community um, survey. From the feedback there, the public indicated they really wanted a space where they could come, they could create things, and possibly like connect and collaborate on projects. And um, so the launch pad started. I was still a children's librarian there without even really looking at the launch pad. Um, but in May 2015, um, two children's librarians, myself and Anne Bouchard, were sort of seconded from the children's department to dream up a digital literacy programming plan that was supposed to span three years. Um, we were given like no idea, we were told not to think about it actually, not to think about staffing, not to think about space, and not to think about budget and come up with sort of like a three-year dream plan for what we would want to do as librarians if we were given sort of free reign. So we um, presented our three-year plan to our library board in June of 2015. They said, this looks great, go. <laughs> so in 2015, September to December, um, two librarians and like a slew of community partners as well as people from our um, public who had specialized skills, we ran about 25 programs and we had more than 2,000 people come during that span of four months. So um, with our space, we had to sort of like move furniture, make it as flexible as possible. It was sort of like a semi-circular type of a room. Some of the furniture we could move, some we could not. So for the next year and a half or so, we really had to juggle with our space and um, sort of accommodate when we could use the equipment, um, when we could run programs, when we wanted to do lectures, when we wanted to clear the entire space and like do robots on the floor. So luckily, in about um, 2017, we were able to get funding for our renovation. Um, before then though, we were finally realized as an official department in about spring of 2016. Over the summer, we took a look at where we wanted to go. So we went back to our three-year plan and pulled out, I guess, six programming areas. So we really wanted to move forward and do um, electronics and robotics, we wanted to do gaming and apps, coding, 3D printing, we wanted to do tech basics, and we also wanted to do animation and design. So, Ambishar and myself are like traditional children's librarians, <laughs> so I really thought that I'd be doing like story time forever. And so I didn't quite expect all, all of this. So we really wanted to hire staff that would be able to help us sort of achieve these goals. So we kind of went non-traditional. We hired people that were artists, 
that were um, media specialists, people that were computer programmers, some of which had never worked in a library before, and some of which like didn't really use libraries very much. But those types of ideas, those types of people, were able to help us sort of think a bit outside of the box. We were able to think of ideas that we might not have come up with on our own. And that was really exciting for us. So um, here we have our new space. <coughs> Um, we were able to um, redevelop everything that was in color. Um, that little sort of circular area, that was what used to be the old launch pad that we saw in the pictures there. Um, the floor plan kind of looks more like this in real life. So we had a dedicated space for a classroom space, like a flexible area, as well as sort of like the round space. We turned that into sort of a lecture area with a six screen media wall, and we do lots of presentations and demos in that space. The nice thing is that there's um, flexible panels that we can move and open. So we can open this up um, to have very large, um, big events so people can come through, or we can close it up more for like a closed classroom space. Um, the sort of rainbow wall that you see behind us there, that is my favorite addition to the launch pad. It is like a floor to ceiling glass wall, and um, it provides great soundproofing. This picture here, um, if you remember the picture of the coding class before, it was very dark. We love our new classroom space. This is actually the very same TV. So we took that TV and mounted it to a different wall. We have a 12 foot green screen that extends um, in front of that television space there. In um, 2016, we were finally recognized as a um, digital services department, so it was official. We did some restructuring as well. So during that summer, 2016, we hired three more staff. So in the fall, we were a team of five. And after the renovations in the spring of 2017, in the fall of 2017, I was able to hire one more digital services librarian, and her name is Kristen LeMay. So now we have an even fuller team and we're very excited for what we can do in the future. So we were able to increase creation stations from two to seven, and we no longer had to juggle that space back and forth between programming and access to equipment. So um, currently, the focus was um, Richmond. We had an increase in population of those ages 20 to 30s. Now, Generally, we don't see them coming into the library during their free time unless they're coming with young families. So we really wanted to target programming at this uh, population that we weren't typically seeing through our doors. So we did a lot of programming for tech meetups. We started a meetup.com group and invited people to weekly hack nights on Wednesdays nights. We tapped into those Dungeons and Dragons players. That was really exciting. We did like a digital Dungeons and Dragons, incorporating some of those digital literacy skills like how to 3D model your Dungeons and Dragons character and print that out. We also did a lot of scripting for choose your own adventure storylines. We started off with maybe like three or four people that were interested. We now have four full games running. We're gonna take one to our branches and we're also gonna do like a kids board game D&D and I'm really excited about that this summer. So we also have code and copy presentations, and we're starting to see those individuals that come into the library and are quite amazed that libraries have changed and moved forward so much. So with the BMPC curriculum change, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for libraries to have those conversations with their local school districts. And we've already been doing work with um, local teachers, trying to get ourselves invited to those teacher conferences and talking about library topics. We also have a variety of class visits where we invite classes to come to the library um, for a variety of topics like green screen with your class, maybe doing some scratch um, coding, um, as well as 3D printing. Now, this year and moving forward, I really want to target those teens. So we've been doing lots of work with um, younger children and with seniors. They typically come to the library and are sort of like high users, but those teenagers, the library, we have to make it, I guess, cool for them, where it's cool to think nothing is cool. So how do we get them to showcase some of their achievements at the library and use those communication skills that are a core piece of the new BC curriculum and able to share and communicate those ideas that they're generating and celebrate those achievements. So that's sort of like back then, present, and into the future. So thank you very much for your time. I'm Kat, I'm from North Vancouver City Library. 
Um, hopefully I can keep this short because we only just launched this service on Tuesday, so I don't have a whole time to talk about <laughs> in terms of you know how it's going. Um, so I'm going to talk about our uh, recording station and our overall creation stations project. Um, if this loads, there we go. All right. So it's kind of a, we have a lot of light, which I love, but at the same time, it makes it very hard to take a good picture of that. So that is our new recording station that launched on Tuesday. Um, it is part of, it came out of a plan maybe about five years ago, um, out of our strategic plan from 2013 to 15 to establish centers where community, creativity, and technology could come together. Um, so much of what we do in libraries is about storytelling, and so this also came out of the question of um, how do people tell their stories, and the recognition that this is changing um, a lot. So we wanted to be able to help um, our community tell their stories in the way they want them to be told, and to learn and adapt to new ways in which they can be told. So a big part of this was storytelling for us. So the creation stations, I think I missed a slide, yes. They were meant to be a suite of stations for digital media creation. We wanted to start with digitization, move on to audio recording, video recording, graphics creation, and 3D printing was in the original plan as well. So the first one that we launched was the digitization station in 2016, so people could convert photos, slides, negatives, um, a variety of videotapes, uh, and vinyl as well. So that's been going for a couple of years now, and you should, usage, I'm sorry, seems to be holding pretty steady for the last few years. Um, 2017 was a strategic planning year, uh, kind of culminating in the launch of our 2018-2021 strategic plan. Um, and so one of the key goals in that plan was to inspire learning, discovery, and creation, which works very well with this ongoing creation station project. So we're basically aiming to create experiences that challenge the imagination, help develop critical skills necessary to function in an online world that's increasingly reliant on audio and video technology. So in keeping with that, uh, we have just launched our new recording station um, on Tuesday. It's technically not actually open to the public yet because facilities things being what facilities things are can sometimes take a little longer than intended. But essentially it is a 10 by 14 um, foot recording booth. Uh, it's from vocalbooth.com, a Vancouver Public Library. I'm not sure where you folks are, but uh, it was incredibly helpful to us in sourcing this and sort of giving us a heads up of what to expect with it. So thank you so much to them. Um, the idea here was kind of a multi-purpose space so that we could support both video and audio recording and post-production. And we did also add a separate editing station outside of the booth for post-production work. So the booth has in it, um, it's a fairly empty-ish box except for kind of this one corner um, with high performance PC, digital audio input device, headphone speakers, MIDI keyboard. Um, we also have a green screen in the other corner that people can use. And the idea is they're borrowing kits of video cameras, microphones, video lighting, mic stands, that kind of thing. So they actually not only learn how to, or they not only record whatever the project is, but really learn both the setup of the equipment and the software in that whole process. So um, in terms of software, we're offering both uh, basic and advanced software for all of this. So for audio, Audacity and Pro Tools 12, the more industry standard professional one. For video, we're doing Adobe Premiere Elements and Premiere Pro as well. So um, we are kind of um, focusing this as a learning environment for, environment for everybody. So we're not a staff station. Um, we're still trying to support the third floor desk. This is on our third floor of our library and desk staff are kind of having to add this to part of their uh, duties. So we're trying to be pretty, or manage um, customer expectations in that uh, staff are there to help users get started, but our users are expected to be able to use the provided resources um, to develop their skills and abilities and we'll kind of support them along the way, but hoping that um, the learning environment model um, will work that way. But we will see how that goes as we have only just launched. Uh, what's next? Um, additional editing stations, adding graphics creation. Um, I don't think 3D printing is still on the table. I'm hoping to move more towards ebook creation, so we'll add a few more stations in there and see how that goes and what our community responds to. Um, we're looking at enclosing our third floor terrace. We have a beautiful deck on the third floor that is criminally underused, so I'm hoping to get a lab out of that. Uh, and then an evolving strategy to basically offer a digital media experience to our customers. That's kind of what we're doing, where we're at, and where we're going. And I think I made it in five minutes.
might be no pictures. And there's not going to be any pictures. Awesome. Um, so, uh, West Vancouver um, opened our learning lab in um, March of this year. So, like, um, North End, we're still very new to this. Um, and I think just the thing to highlight is that um, we, as libraries, take get a lot. Like, I know we've asked North End a ton of things. we talked to Richmond a ton when we were planning these um, sort of events. And um, being able to work with other libraries is sort of, like, the main the best part of being a, working in public libraries is being able to leverage your uh, the expertise of your your colleagues across these systems. And I think I saw my computer turn on from over here. And I'm going to psychically try and make my things show up. So one sec. <laughs> I don't want to make Jay sad. <laughs> it's not me, ultimate. Where's the mic? It's not me you'll be making sad. It's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually toss this up on the tool shed so that people can look at it. So, um, because my technology is not set up, um, I'm just going to keep these pictures up here and really highlight. So, sort of what we started with was a um, digital literacy framework as sort of what we did first and then what we did that's not gonna work no that's okay you can see all the pretty pictures up there um, we started with the digital literacy framework and then came from there and our community consultation to the space that we needed so the space we built and opened um, earlier this year is totally flexible space um, so both of our the chairs the tables can all be pushed aside and we're able to um, run all sorts of programs um, and we've increased programming um, with a sort of uh, adjusted team of staff um, to run um, instead of like two or three programs um, a month to um, two to three programs a day. So we're still in the growth spurt of this. Summer Reading Club starts super shortly and we're doing a ton of uh, youth programming around digital literacy um, and a lot of those um, new BC curriculum uh, skills throughout the summer, um, especially around uh, self-regulation, curiosity, and self-determined um, sort of learning outcomes, um, which is a lot of fun. And um, we can do all sorts of neat stuff. We have a green screen because green screens are cool. Um, we have a lot of different things around wireless presentation, partially because we can see um, even now that things like desktops are basically done. Um, laptops are where um, a lot of our community is currently at. And then we are thinking that in the next few years, like, you know, you'll have something to make this bigger um, instead of having something bigger as well. Um, so we want to think towards the future a bit when we're building these spaces um, and the way that we're, we're putting it together is to make it as flexible as possible and um, not even quite know what we'll be doing two years from now. What we are hoping to do next year, um, what we're planning right now, is around music literacy. Um, West End is a very big music community, um, so we're definitely going to look into different ways of digital music creation. If anyone's ever run a DJ class for kids, talk to me because I'd love to do something like that. I think it'd be fun. Um, as well as really um, in our community, as well as many of yours, um, there's still people who are taking computer basics and internet basics and trying to get themselves started and situated in the world, and that is um, I think a lot more of our curriculum and our time than perhaps people expected at the outset. So um, if you are thinking about these spaces, make sure there is still space for those beginners. Um, we're working on things like meetups, uh, but again, like three months in, it's going to take a while. And I think uh, if you come to the breakout table with the three of us, we can probably talk at length about trying to build community, get the word out, and the amount of effort that's required in these sort of non-traditional library services um, and how do we digital collections barely are getting out there so how do we get the, the rest of that those conversations out there when people aren't expecting it um fine there jay are you okay does that help <coughs> yeah yeah okay that's it come to our table we'll talk to you more thanks for letting me close